I'm going to turn the ignition on. My heated jacket here. I'm going to plug in my lead and hold it down. And I've got power. That's the great thing about this wiring system is that you don't have to have the kickstand up and the propulsion doesn't have to be on in order for this to work. The biggest missteps whenever the Harley Davidson Live R got designed was the lack of a 12 volt power supply, which isn't entirely true because there is a 12 volt converter that goes from the main pack to the small lithium battery that helps power the lights, blinkers, screen, all that other stuff. Now, thankfully, there's some really clever members of the Live R community that have figured out how to tap into that 12 volt converter, which lets you power up things like heated gear, chargers, extra USB ports. And truth be told, it works incredibly well, especially when it comes to heated gear. It works so well then I'm gonna get the same cable system and put it on my other live wire. It's gonna be freezing all next week and I have to take this live wire to a dealer about three hours away, so I'm gonna need the heated gear. So today I'm heading to another Harley Davidson dealer to go pick up all the cabling accessories that I need, and thankfully it's incredibly cheap. Despite being winter here in Virginia, I'm gonna stop real quick. I gotta pee so bad. I'm at 53%, gone 51.6 miles, so I'm gonna charge real quick while I go to the bathroom. And that should give me more than enough to get down to this dealership and then make it back home. So just trying to make wise use of time. I might even grab a coffee while I'm at it. This is the cable that we need right here, and I'll bring the camera in closer so that I can explain what we're gonna do to get this to work. All right, so essentially we're going to, oh man. We're gonna connect this to the 12 volt converter. We're gonna reconnect it using this little guy. This is just an extra connector. Doesn't really go to anything. And we're not gonna use it, so don't worry about this one. That's where we're going to connect our battery lead or our auxiliary lead or whatever it is that you want to connect to your bike. So the wires that we're going to be using, we're going to be using the black wire. Okay, so this guy, this is going to go to our non-fused lead. So here's our fuse. So the non-fused lead is going to go to the black wire. And then the fused lead or what would be the red if you're using like a regular terminal cable, is gonna to go to the purple. It's not gonna to go to the red, it's gonna to go to the purple one, okay? So what I'm gonna to do now is I'm gonna strip these wires, I'm gonna brazen them as well, and then I'm gonna connect the two together.
cabling's done. Now it's time to hook this up. And so we're going to take a we're going to take a T30 Torx bit, and we're going to unscrew this screw right here. That out of the way, we're gonna lift this cover, and push it out of the way. Now it's really hard to see it where this cable is. So it's this cable right here that we're gonna undo. Essentially, this little tab right here is just like this. And so we need to reach under with our finger, pinch here, and then pull it out of that that uh, male end that's going to stay with the bike. So this is the end right here that we're going to plug in to our cable. Other end of our cable is going to go into the part that we just unplugged. All right, so I'm going to take the female end coming from the bike and we're going to plug in the male end from our splitter cable. You should hear a click that lets you know that it's seated properly. And then we're going to take the female end from the cable that we just bought. We're going to plug that end into the bike. And then we're going to wait for that click. There we go. Once that is done, then we're going to Reseat this uh, plastic cover, and there's a slot right here that we can guide the cabling through and behind, and it just kind of helps keep it out of the way of everything else down here. Now, there is a bit of a technique to get the right side hooked in place, you're going to want to tilt it up push it forward, and then it should lock in place. Now the last thing that you want to do once you have this in place is we're going to test it to make sure that it works, and then we're going to secure all the excess cabling to the bike itself. And there's a few places that you do not want to attach it to, but first we're going to test this out to make sure that it works. Hold it down, and I've got power. All right, and these are the places that you don't want to secure all of your excess wiring. The first and most obvious is the uh, rear shock and the compression spring. You don't want to put it anywhere near the operation of that. You don't want to hook it up to this. This is your coolant excess valve. These orange cables which go directly to the main pack, which leaves us with only the framing that you can attach this to. Now I'm going to bundle up my cable right here. There's a nice uh, concave surface on the inside that has enough room for all the bundled wire to fit. And again, this is just temporary for now because I only need it for my heated gear. But eventually, I'll come up with a more streamlined system and have the cabling tucked away somewhere in here. Now, when it comes to power output, I believe you don't want to exceed 12 to 15 amps, if I remember correctly. I'll have the correct number here up on the screen. But again, what I have on Veronica, that is just for heated gear, and on Vivian, which is over here, uh, she has the SAE connector, which is this one right here. Again, this is universal one, so I can do heated gear with this cable. I can also do uh, USB with this one. So if you're wanting to power more than just heated gear, if you want to power um, more power for a cell phone if you're running a lot of apps at once. Everyone knows that the USB-C on the live wire that's dedicated to charge your smartphone. If you're running a lot of apps on it, it kind of kills it. Uh, it doesn't really charge it very fast. It's a very low amp charger. Uh, this would solve your problem right here. Uh, Harley-Davidson also sells a splitter cable from the SAE. So if you wanted to run heated gear and charge your phone at the same time. You could, again, as long as you don't exceed 15 amps. I plan on using it for heated gear and for my GPS. So again, there's lots of different options. If you want to get these for yourself or for your live wire, get some nice auxiliary power, the links are in the description below.
But if you want to check out one of my adventures, click this video right here. Peace out.